Hello and welcome back to No BS. Today we return to talking about the Democratic vice presidential nominee, none other than Kamala Harris. Recently, the president nominee for the Democrats, Joe Biden, announced that Kamala Harris would be joining his ticket, and needless to say, many were very interested in this choice. Kamala, of course, is a politician from California who failed at a presidential run herself and was forced to drop out before Christmas of last year. And now she's reemerged as this new VP candidate, and everyone's trying to talk her up. The media is praising her, saying, oh, it's great. We have this female minority candidate. This will be a first. Everyone's trying to get all stoked about it. And just frankly, I just don't get it. It's not really that exciting for me. Obviously, I'm still voting for the other side, so that makes a big difference. But in addition, it's just, you know, I don't get the whole big deal. Like, she's not the first female candidate. She's not the first minority candidate overall. I mean, we had Obama as a president for eight years. He was half black. We've had female candidates before, like Sarah Palin from 2008. And yeah, we had Hillary Clinton as a presidential candidate last election, of course. And in addition, the real problem and the real stuff I want to address today is more about Kamala's background. I want to talk about how She's really not this kind of like pick her up by her bootstraps kind of person they try to put out there. They try to act like she's a woke minority who suffered a lot in her past and had to like face hardships and get all this stuff. Like, you know, the whole story, you know, the whole story that minorities are all poor and terrible. That's at least what the Democrats want you to believe. But that's just not true. I mean, we've argued against that a lot. And specifically, we have some great arguments to go over about Kamala today. We're going to talk more about her background where she's from, where her family's from. We're going to talk about her parents and how privileged they are and just go over the whole story. We're going to get to all that soon, talk about all the details and everything. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. The first thing I want to point out is this chart. This chart says median household income in the United States by ethnic group. And as you can see, the top level there is Indian Americans. Their median household income is over $100,000. That's a lot of cash. That's a really good high income, and I'm happy for them. But the problem comes up when you realize that Kamala Harris is Indian American. She's enjoying this top rung of the sort of hierarchy of people's average salaries, and she's certainly rich. She's getting a lot of money. Her parents probably each made 100000 a year. Her household income was well above this average. And if you just look through the list, you see that they're above all these other minorities, too. You got a lot of Asian groups, Pakistan, white Americans are way down here at about 59000 a year. And then even the average American is 56. So that means she's almost twice as much on the average median household income. And this obviously can be more or less, this is just a chart and a summation of what our citizens are making. And it just goes to show that this kind of minority group that Kamala's in, she's Indian. She says this in video. She's talked about it. She has Indian mother. She's dressed up in Indian traditional garb and all kinds of stuff like that. So she's actually enjoying the top level of experience as an American immigrant. So it's not really like she's coming from this kind of broken home or this kind of like tough experience, like how people claim, like how the press wants you to think, oh, she's just this poor, you know, half black, half Asian woman. You know, they, that's how they try to frame it up, which again is misleading. It's not wholly true. She's half black, half Indian. And yeah, the problem with that term again is we've talked about this before too. They want to call her Asian. I think Asian just sounds better in their identity politics driven kind of ideology. And I obviously know that India is technically in Asia. We know how the continent and maps work, but the truth of the matter is Americans and in our culture and society, we call that Indian. We don't call them Asian. We have a distinct term for it. They're called Indians. So to call them South Asians is a little misleading, I think. I think it's purposely probably misleading by the leftists trying to lump them in with a different group, which is just, yeah, I think it might be because of charts like this, because people do know that Indian Americans are very well off. They're usually very smart. They're usually doctors, lawyers, and stuff like that, like highly educated immigrants that are making a lot of money. So they don't want to say Indian. That's why they say something like Asian instead. 
So that covers that. Next, I want to talk more about her parents. This is where we get more into what they actually do. Like I said, her parents are doctors and PhDs and stuff. Like they have really, really high paying, like learned jobs. They have high educations. You know, they're making good money. So there's not really a lot of arguments for her being some kind of victim. This article has more details. It's from Oprah Magazine. It says, Senator Kamala Harris's parents met during the civil rights movement. Okay, that's pretty interesting. But let's talk more about who her parents are. Let's get to those details, and that'll help us get this story into context. So the newly minted 2020 vice presidential candidate, Senator Kamala Harris, has a supportive roster of family members by her side from her husband, Douglas Emhoff, to her accomplished sister, Maya, and stepchildren. We're actually going to talk more about her immediate family soon, but let's focus on the parents part. One important part of her backstory is her biracial African-American and Indian-American identity she inherited from her parents. Shaimala Gopalan and Donald Harris both immigrated to the United States from India and Jamaica, respectively, to pursue doctorate degrees in the University of California, Berkeley. So this is another part. This is actually a good example of how they mislead about her background because a lot of people would not say Kamala is African-American. They're claiming she's African-American here. And I guess that's technically true. Like you might say that Jamaica is part of the American continent, even though it's like an island in the Caribbean, it's technically in the same kind of space, but it's not what we would call it in America. Again, this is why words matter, terms matter. In certain areas, certain things are called certain things. And we know in America, if you say African-American, you're talking about people that came from Africa straight to the United States of America, usually hundreds of years ago, usually because of you know the slave trade and stuff like that, bad backstory there. And that's why they use this term that implies that Kamala is a victim when really her dad was from Jamaica. And in fact, she's a descendant of the other side of that issue. So they're trying to imply that Kamala is coming from this terrible side of being slaves in her family. But actually her family were the slave holders in Jamaica. Her family owned hundreds of slaves and she has ancestors that have their own towns named after them called Brown Town. And yeah, they owned the slaves. So she was actually on the opposite side. So this is more about how it's very misleading to put her on the side of the victims when really she was on the side of the perpetrator. She was on the side of the victimizers. And yeah, and that's only the beginning. There's more about her parents. They're trying to talk about this civil rights movement and, you know, there's something about them getting divorced. But what I'm really interested in is what her parents do in their education. So let's see if we can skip down and find anything. Okay, so here's her mom. Kamala Harris's mom was a prominent breast cancer researcher. My mother was a pioneering breast cancer researcher, so I grew up learning about the importance of screening and early detection. Harris shared in an Instagram post during Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So this is a very, very educated job. Like this is something, if you're a researcher, if you're a medical researcher, that means her mom was really smart. She went to a lot of schools. Right here it says, Shamala's work took her to many top research institutions, including University of Illinois, University of Wisconsin, Department of Medicine at McGill University in Montreal, as well as Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory. She made substantial contributions to the field of hormones and breast cancer, publishing her research in countless journals and receiving numerous honors, according to her obituary. So this is someone who is highly educated, like making a lot of money. She's got her PhD. She studies and works for all these universities. Like this is someone who is not a victim. This is someone who did really well for themselves in America. And that's great. Like I'm not trying to shame success and education. Those are good things. And that's, I just want to bring it up to point out that Kamala herself and the democratic machine and the media, they're being misleading about her past. And I think that's super, super messed up. So next, let's talk about Kamala's dad, Donald Harris. It says here he was born in Jamaica. He was born in 1938, immigrated to the United States, and got his doctorate degree from University of California, Berkeley. He eventually became a naturalized citizen. Her dad is a professor of economics emeritus at Stanford University. Now, okay, already, these are really, really high-profile colleges in California. That means this guy was really smart. He got a lot of education, you know, UC Berkeley, working at Stanford for many years, becoming this high-profile emeritus in economics. I mean, this guy is one of the top economics professors in the country. He's got a ton of money. Stanford is a really big, really important school in California. Lots of smart people there. And 
you know, that's the thing. That's all I'm trying to say is that Kamala's mean misleading. She's got great parents who are really smart. Granted, there was a broken home situation. There was a divorce in 1970s. But the point is, she didn't come from like these poor people. And she's not from, she's not like African American or like a slave descendant, like they imply. She's actually really privileged and probably far more privileged than most of us. Like, that's the thing that really triggers us is like she rails against white people, like all the Democrats. They act like we all have privilege when really it's them. I mean, it's just so obvious. And I think that almost wraps things up. The only other thing I want to share is a picture of her family here. This is Kamala's family. This is her husband and her stepkids. And, you know, it's nothing wrong with that. Like, I, I'm glad that she's happy and she found a nice white family to be a part of. That's great. But it really contradicts her and her message. And this whole race baiting thing is just really getting out of hand. Like, she tries to act like she's woke and down with the minorities. But, I mean, she's not a victim. She's not poor. She didn't come up from nothing. She had great educated parents who did a lot of good things for her uh, besides, you know, of course, turning her into this biased politician. Like she definitely didn't turn out all right at the end. I don't know if that was her parents' fault or her getting lost along the way. But the point is no one's trying to shame Kamala. I'm just trying to expose a lot of truths about her and just prove that, you know, they're misleading you. They're not what they claim. She's not this big woke like victim. She tries to pretend she's black. She doesn't have any kind of real kind of identification with that community. And, you know, she's really this Indian American who has a higher than average income for her family. She's rich. She lives in California. And, you know, she's just this rich elitist who comes from really, really overeducated people. And that's the truth. That's what's really going on with the Kamala Harris situation. That about wraps things up. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Make sure you comment your thoughts on everything below. Also, hit that subscribe button if you're new. Like the video if you enjoyed it. And hit the bell for notifications. Until next time, have a great day. Hey guys, I just want to take a quick moment to tell you about our new second channel. I've recently updated and revamped the second channel, now called No BS News. There I'm posting extra videos that I can't fit on this channel. I'm also doing some live streams, I'm playing video games, and doing lots of other cool, fun stuff for you guys. I want to give you guys more content on a separate channel so you can go and subscribe there, hit that bell for notifications. I'm going to put a link below to No BS News, or just search No BS News on YouTube. It's our second channel. It's a lot of fun, and I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. Thanks for your time. Have a great day. We'll see you on the next video.